Yo, this is Supermax Hernandez, and you're watching Countdown City Russell Cast. Boom! I got it. What's up, Peels and baby faces? Welcome to another episode of the Countdown City WrestleCast. I'm your host, JC, and I am joined this week by Tommy. You! Mike is not able to join us this week, but I'm sure he would say, I'm Mike, and this is 2020. So... <laughs> he did not push out this close to the end of 2020, did he? We've been no. going through this whole thing all this time, and now he ditches us in 2020. I don't think so, you Coward! know. Okay. You know, uh, the last last week before the break for teachers, I'm sure he's trying to get all that stuff yeah. done. So, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Although but, I'm sure he's gonna just probably do the ring about this next next time he's on. But yeah. Yeah, I'm sure uh, next week we'll probably have him, Tez, hopefully Tina as well, because we'll be going through our uh, WrestleCast awards for the year. So, and that'll be fun to talk about. So, yep. uh, our Twitter account, of course, at CCG underscore WrestleCast, and subscribe here the Countdown City Geeks YouTube channel. Today is a bit of a loaded show. Uh, Tommy and I are going to quickly recap Impact Final Resolution, mm-hmm. which uh, pretty much turned into a pretty stacked card. Yeah. There's a lot going on as, as after we yeah. recorded. Uh, we're going to preview Ring of Honor's lone pay-per-view of the year. They're able to sneak one in, Ring of Honor Final Battle. And, and of all the ones they needed to do, this is the one that I was hoping they'd do. So. Yeah. Thankfully, they got this one in. And, of course, WWE TLC. Uh, pretty much the final pay-per-views of the entire year for wrestling. Um, this is where <laughs> 2020 is going to have its send-off for wrestling. It's been yeah. quite the year, obviously. So uh, let's jump right into it. Um, shortly before we started recording, some news broke about Impact that we're going to get into. Uh, final resolution. Uh, Tommy and I haven't seen the show in its entirety. We saw some highlights, uh, some some results. Um some things I do want to point out that I thought were great. Uh, first of all, Tommy Dreamer sending Larry D to jail for the attempted murder of Johnny Bravo. I thought it was hilarious. I just, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know why I love this. I shouldn't. It's so, it's so, it's so eighty stupid. But I guess you know what? I guess the good thing is it's not the main event thing that we're always talking about. So no. that makes it more fun. So yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> uh, Hernandez beating Fall of Ball and then still not getting his money. I'm. I'm telling you, Sean, Kira and Tasha, they probably already spent the money, dude. It's just you're not getting it back. I'm Did sorry it, to say, you know. It didn't fall about tell them stop being rich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was amazing. <laughs> when he yelled, stop being rich. I, just, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. You're right there. Yeah, I'm good. It was, that, was, that was just so funny to me. I'm good, though. I'm good. Go ahead. Um, let's see what else here. Oh, uh, so Rohit Raju has been doing his uh, open challenges, basically. And Manic showed up, got the win. Uh, obvious in disguise, it's TJP, if you haven't figured it out already. It seems pretty obvious that it's TJP. But still, it was pretty uh, pretty cool to see that. And they're hopefully building something out with the X Division. So, yeah. you know. Uh, were you at least disappointed that Rosemary didn't beat Diana Perazzo? Or yeah, were you happy with that? Uh, yeah, I was, but I, I get why they did it. But I, on, on the plus side, Jessica Havoc won on the tag team match. Although that was yeah. hard for me to call too because I like the Sea Stars, but I'm I was happy to see the Sea Stars on in a major promotion, which they've earned. They deserve it. Good for them. But you know, Havoc won, so I you know I'm and yeah, six and one and a half dozen in the other. Yeah, uh, and it. It appears to me that the North is going to be broken up fairly soon. Um, yeah. Ethan Page loses to Carl Anderson, so they don't get the title shot. They're kind of fighting already. I mean, it seems to be the way the yeah. race is going. So, yeah. Um, also, it's like Eric Young is forming a, forming another faction. He's already got Joe Doring. So. Yeah. I mean, starting his own kind of cult faction, if you will. You know. Well, I mean, I mean, he, yeah. I mean, he had that one group, World Elite, before he didn't have that anymore. I don't even know what happened with that. Which I thought was actually a cool idea, and then it just went nowhere. Kind of the part of the course for TNA in the twenty tens. Uh, <laughs> and then, of course, the uh, main event was Rich Swan defending his Impact World Championship against Chris Bay. Uh, 
has gotten a lot of praise online for this match. That so. that match was probably, I think, the thing that made the show a million times better. I mean, the show was like pretty. I think the show was fine for what it was, but that match I think put the show on another level because those two just worked their tails off in that match. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, we saw a lot of uh, people posting about. Uh, I think Chris Bay had shared a, a post. I think you retweeted as well. Uh, Kid was happy to see two people that look like him wrestling for a world championship, and I think yeah. that was really important. That uh, yeah, you know, uh, to see Impact uh, bringing that out, which is really awesome. So yeah, yeah, I I I, I totally I totally when I saw that I totally agreed. I was like, yeah, it's 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 a it's a big deal with representation. It just does matter whether people want to admit it or not. So yeah. now, uh, of course. They did announce that their next Impact Plus show is going to be Genesis on January 9th, which is a week before Hard to Kill. And as I mentioned right before we started recording, they dropped a bombshell on Impact today. Uh, recording this on Tuesday, obviously. But, <laughs> you know, when it, it was revealed basically that AEW and Impact had a working relationship, we didn't know the extent of what this was going to be. But this is a hell of a match to have at Hard to Kill on a pay-per-view setting. Omega, Kenny Omega, AW World Champion, teaming up with the Good Brothers, current TNA or Impact Tag Team Champions, taking on Rich Swan, the Impact World Champion, and the Motor City Machine Guns in a six man tag at Hard to Kill. And he even threw in the, the name uh, Bullet Club there. They, <laughs> the they, 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 yeah. <laughs> So somewhere I'm hoping Finn Balor's watching and just just smiling and nodding his head like yes <laughs> we have conquered everything no I can't deny it. <laughs> it's like they did what the NWO did but better anyway uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's uh, I, it's pretty awesome to see you know I I honestly cannot believe this is happening and the fact that 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 door is clearly open and the fact that Chris Bay and uh, TJP were also at the Super J Cup. Uh, for New Japan uh, is just crazy to me. It's like, in 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 a weird way, maybe this year did bring something good. Like, these companies just had to work together, and that could be something good. And I mean, I need some win out of this year, so I'll take that. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, pretty good show. Obviously, we didn't get to see all of it, so we're not going to rate it, but yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm really... I'm really enjoying the fact that Impact is making a really good use of their streaming service, not just for the library, but starting to do these live specials. Um, and obviously the pandemic kind of accelerated that, but I'm hoping this is a trend that they continue once a month, once every other month, like they're kind of running now. And I think that'll be really good for them. So uh, they'll, probably, they'll probably do that. Yeah, they'll probably do that, especially when they get the fans back. It'll probably be a special thing to do to keep the fans. Like they have to use how they would have like Batch of the Brewery when they were here. Yeah, for, for RC and everything, so they'll probably do that. Probably do that. Be pretty cool to see. Um, yep. Now let's move on to Ring of Honor Final Battle. Woo! Tommy, you're a huge Ring of Honor fan. Uh, yes. Were you worried this year that with all this going on, we talked about it when the pandemic started. We thought they were going to suffer the most. Uh, yeah. Not a strong TV I... deal. They relied on pay per views. How happy are you for I this? Mean... You know, I'm I'm thrilled for this. I mean, well, they were light on your reviews anyway. I mean, but like they, but like they would have like the major ones they would have would be Final Battle, um, uh, Death Before Dishonor, uh, and um, oh, what's the name of the anniversary show? Just their anniversary show, really? I think it's just their anniversary show. Yeah, yeah. And then they had one in the summer. Was it was it Glorify Honor in the summer? I think I it think was. So. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, they would just mainly have those four, but considering we didn't even have three of them, and like, and the, and the one of the summer was supposed to be their big, like, anniversary show, bringing in a lot of old school guys and and new school guys to face each other. Especially one of those was going to be Xavier, who passed this year, which just you know broke my heart all to pieces. Um, because actually, the funny part was for the Vegas show, I was actually trying to figure out if I could go to that. That's the amazing part. Is like I was actually trying to figure out if I. I was like, I know I couldn't fly out there. I was like, but if I rent a car, I just drive all night straight through. And I was actually asking people, I was like, hey, is anybody going to this? Can I just crash on your floor in your hotel room if I just drove all night to meet you there? And I actually had a couple people say, yeah, we're going if you want to go, if you want to meet us. I was like, and I, I seriously was like thinking like, huh, that might be worth it. <laughs> I, was, and I was actually going to go. But yeah, so it's, it's good to know at least we're getting Final Battle, which has always been one of their biggest deals. Like ever since 02, 
their final battle. If I, I don't even think it, they meant for it to be that way, but I think it just kind of molded into their WrestleMania show. Aside from yeah. they have a show during WrestleMania weekend, but like it just like, kind of molded into their biggest show. Final battle did just you know I guess off off the what happens during it alone. So yeah, this is this is the big event for them. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm very happy that they're getting this to send off because really they had to shut everything down probably about a week before their anniversary show, which yeah. is going to be the first pay per view of the year. So yeah. Um, they didn't, but, have, they didn't uh, have a show here they couldn't do because of all, all of this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, I will note that this final battle has already been taped, believe it or not. It was taped on December 10th, but behind closed doors, nobody's seen it. Of course, and it's, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's going to air on pay-per-view this Friday. I'll have more of those details later. But there's a grand total of eight matches. Three were labeled for the pre-show. And um, one, though, is going to have points on the main card. We're going to talk specifically about the main card matches but by virtue for one we're going to talk one pre-show match when we get to it so we're going to start uh with oj key Tabin and bennett against the righteous um yeah mike's not joining us but he did send me his picks uh he's going with Tabin and bennett i'm inclined to agree with them i mean this uh uh mike bennett since he's made his return this is really the first time on a big roh stage he's getting to wrestle so i'm, I'm picking yeah. them to win uh, Tommy, what about you? Uh, yeah, I, I am too. Uh, because I think I think uh, for the righteous Vincent and Bateman, I think Vincent's been Vincent has been screwing with Matt Taven so long uh -huh. after he broke up the original kingdom that this is it's time for Taven to get his revenge and Mike Bennett to get his get get his comeback and everything. And I want to go ahead and say again how happy I am to see Mike Bennett back. I'm very worried how I wanted him to end up. I hope I was hoping it was back to ROH because I want I love I loved the kingdom when they originally had it i was like this is just so much fun and and the funny part was i remember when someone when mike bennett was in wwe and someone like insulted him about like not being that not being that big a star and he pointed out how he's won championships literally everywhere and i was like it's like i, I even been iwgp tag champion new japan and i was like i almost forgot that happened but yeah <laughs> I mean, because technically the fun the funniest part about that was technically the kingdom was considered a subgroup of chaos at that point Right. right, so not only that, he was certainly part of one of their biggest factions. I almost forgot that happened. Oh my god! So yeah, so you know, and with everyone still hopefully working together now, shoot, and then they could go back to New Japan and try to make waves again. Why not? I mean, everyone else does. So <laughs> yeah, hopefully they're able to ride, make make something of this, get back to some sense of normalcy when all this goes yeah. away. So yeah. Right. Uh, television championship now. Dragon Lee is going to be defending against the winner of a four corner survival match that's going to be on the pre show. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be either against uh, Tony Deppin, LSG, Josh Woods, or Dak Draper. Um, Mike is picking Dragon Lee. And honestly, the fact that somebody is going to have to wrestle an elimination style match earlier in the night and then come back and face Dragon Lee, this puts all the advantage on Dragon Lee. I can't yeah. see him losing the belt. So. Yeah. I'm going Dragon Lee. I think you are too, Tommy, from the sound. I, I am too. I, I I do think of the four winning, it'll probably... It, I, I'm guessing Josh Woods. I think he's the most recognizable name as far as ROH goes. But honestly, yeah, I see Dragon Lee keeping this. Uh, he, he's, he's definitely one of, been one of their biggest stars. And until uh, travel opens up back in Japan on a regular again, um, which I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer when it does, he's going right back to go for that uh, junior heavyweight belt one more time because he's got to finish business with that title. So yeah, but for now, yeah, I, I think I, I can see him still keeping. And I also think you know he's a huge R over guy with ROH. So yeah, okay. Uh, now on to uh, pretty much the rest of the card is t is uh, title matches, the tag team yeah. championship, the foundation, Jay Lethal and Jonathan Gresham. Gresham's pulling double duty tonight, he and he's going to be he defending is. their titles against first Mark Briscoe and PCO. Uh, Mike going with the foundation. Uh, Tommy, what about you? I, I don't, <laughs> this one's so hard to call. Uh -huh. For one, why is Mark Briscoe tagging with PCO? Because that why not? The two most, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the two most mentally unstable, and I say that ironically because in real life, Mark Briscoe is actually super intelligent, but it's like, it's the two most unstable personalities. <laughs> you know what? For that reason, I'm actually going Briscoe and PCO. Right. Because they're so they're so insane that they just might. It's so crazy that it just might work. And also, it's like it's the fact that I think if anything, Gresham might keep his pure title, which I guess I'm kind of giving away my pick there. But uh, well, I might anyway. Um, so, yeah. But 
it's it's just this amazing chemistry that they have, but I think they're going to put it to the test this year with the foundation as this new faction forming. But also, I also do like the name foundation, so it's hard for me to pick against them, but I think Mark and PCR are just insane enough to make it work. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm sticking with the foundation only because I really think this is going to be the first first on the card between this and the pure championship. Uh, um, uh, you know, uh, so I think whatever is second, Grisham is in danger of losing. And I think uh, but the tag team match might be pretty early on in the card, I think. And then he's going to have to come back and do the Pure Championship, which we're going to get into now. Uh, ROH Pure Championship, Gresham defending against Flip Gordon. Mike is actually picking Gresham to get the clean sweep and for Gresham to win and retain the Pure Championship. I'm picking, because I think this is going to go second, I think Flip Gordon's going to end up winning the Pure Championship. So, And Tommy, from the sounds of it, you think that he's going to retain. So, yeah, I think he's gonna retain. I think because I'm I'm thinking Flip's gonna win something, especially come 2021. But yeah. I think right now, I think right now with the way they built up the pure title again, I and and I honestly Gresham was the right guy to win it. I mean, I I as as again an old ROH head here. I remember the days of the pure championship. And and quick side note, I'm back. I'm glad that they back. They went back to acknowledging AJ Styles was the first champion again. Because they didn't do it for a long time because they were mad at TNA. So, right. <laughs> like for the longest time, every, for the longest time, Arwish refused to acknowledge that AJ Styles was the first champion because they were mad at TNA, which I was like, that's got nothing to do with AJ Styles. But anyway, so, <laughs> so yeah. I'm glad they went back to acknowledging him as first champion. But of, of, of everyone in the current era who should have won it back, who should have been the first guy as the pure champion again, it absolutely should have been Jonathan Grisham. That was the right call there. And that's why I think they're going to keep it on him for at least a little bit longer. Maybe not much longer after this, but I think for now he's going to keep it. Okay. Um, and finally, the world championship. Roosh defending against Brody King. Uh, Mike is picking Roosh. Tommy, <sighs> what do you this one? Oh, man. I have been torn with this one for weeks when I heard it was coming. I don't know, man. I I might have to go with the, with the bit of the dark horse in this one and say Brody King because I think he's one of the guys who's who's amazingly good and like not not at all, not at all what people are expecting out of out of a guy like him. So uh, yeah, I, I think I'm gonna go Brody King to to kind of shock the world there. Kind of like PCO did that last that last. Oh time my I god! Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> I I think I'm sticking with Roosh on this. I feel and and I hate it for him because his title reign really suffered because he was really getting going and then yeah. everything got shut down. He was gonna have a great year. Yeah, um, it was. He was. Yeah. It, had 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 this been like a year where he probably would have like probably lost it and gained it back already by now, which I don't know why in my head, like that's what happened. Like he would lose it somewhere during the summer, but then probably win it back and then face not necessarily Brody King, but someone else right around now. I would say he'd keep it, but with all this going on, I think he's going to lose it. But ironically enough, is it weird that I say I see him getting it back too, like sometime soon? Like, yeah, after this? that's possible. Yeah. <laughs> like maybe by their summer show, whatever. The, you know what? I've got to look this up. What is their main summer show? You can keep going. I just got to know. Super Card of Honor. Good. Super card of honor, maybe. That's it. That's, That's what it, it is. Yeah. Super card of honor. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. That was That's that was good. I was actually making my head hurt. I couldn't think of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, Roosh, I think, is uh just for the fact that he didn't really have much of a year defending that title. I think they're gonna kinda just oh, kind of best of the world. That's what the, that's best what they're the world. Best and world. then uh Sorry. they're gonna hit the proverbial reset button and just allow him to start off twenty twenty one as champion and build from there. So well, yeah. well, at least they're not doing the WCW reset where they made everyone literally give them their belts back. And then I, I, I'm sorry, I keep bringing that up, but I, I hated that. Of all the WCW did, that probably made me the angriest because that was yeah. the dumbest decision. Oh god, exactly. Well, that's Ring of Honor final battle. Uh, again, we're happy they're getting a pay per view before the end of the year. Uh, stay tuned at the end of the show. We'll have all the details on how you can watch the event and. For now, we're going to move on to another event, the last pay-per-view event of the year in wrestling period, WWE TLC. Um, of course, we're still awaiting uh, SmackDown this Friday, so there's only six matches on the card. I imagine maybe like one or two more, possibly three could be added. Um, but we're going to talk about what we have right here in front of us. Uh, for first, let's talk The Fiend against Randy Orton. Um, 
Mike's going to Fiend. I'm going to Fiend on this. I think right now uh, everyone's going Fiend. I, I can't yeah. see beating the Fiend right now. It's yeah, just I'm any not, sense. I, I, I will say I'm more interested in this than I thought I'd be, considering we've literally done this before. But to be fair, they have given us some space in between when this last happened, you know, like proper booking should go. And it has a different aspect to it with the whole Alexa Bliss, uh, a.k.a. Sister Bliss, I guess, whatever we want to call her. Yeah. Uh, and so I guess that's that's the, that's the good part about this is like there's been space in between it. There's different there's a different gimmick going on now, and uh, so yeah, you know it's amazing what happened when you can book it properly. Vince. Anyway, yep. sorry. Yeah. Uh, the women's tag team championship, uh, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler are defending against Oscar and a partner to be determined. Uh, it was supposed to be a lot of it. They're working some sort of uh, injury angle where she's going to be off TV for a month. So uh, Mike. Is going with Oscar and the mystery partner. I'm inclined to agree with them only because I think the mystery partner is going to be Charlotte, and Charlotte is going to be the surprise return as Oscar's partner because Charlotte hasn't won a tag team title yet, and so this would be the chance for her to get. Uh, so, uh, that's, that's my a really thought. Good point. Yeah. So, uh, but that's where I'm going with this. Tommy, what about you? Yeah, I'll agree, especially with Charlotte. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 damn it. Fine. <laughs> but, but, but if nothing else, that means Oscar will get another belt, which always works for me. So, you know, even if it means that we have, I mean, I don't, and again, this is like the same problem I have whenever I talk about Brock Lesnar. I don't necessarily hate Brock because I, I absolutely do not hate Charlotte. I love Charlotte. She is fantastic. But my God, just, I mean, let her not necessarily win all the time. She's good without even winning. Yeah, that's my thing. With, that's my thing with Charlotte is like, is like, I get it. You want her to be a multiple time champion, but you can do that and make it also not annoying because she's just fine. It's like, it, it it's she's great. I'm, I never want to talk down about Charlotte because it's not like because like she she's another wrestler who ticks all the boxes of what to do right in the ring, and she's another uh, and as far as wrestling wrestling personality goes, there's just the limit. You know, it's like yeah, I agree. There are other women on the roster who can, who, who are, who are good as well, and who are as good as Charlotte, in my opinion. You know, and who who can rise to that occasion. Becky and Bailey, obviously. You know, I mean, Sasha's already on the list because she's the one that who's cheated with Charlotte the most. But Becky and Bailey absolutely rose to that occasion. Ba- Bailey in a, in a amazing uh, haircut, full way. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, I mean, so, yeah, it'll probably be her. And so, yeah, sure. And besides, I think Nia and Shane are tired of each other anyway. So. <laughs> and I want Shane to be a singles champion already. Yeah, it's it's kind of, she's kind of got bogged in. It's like, oh, let's just throw him in a tag team. I know. You know it's like, know. I'm so, I'm so, she, she I'm, like, she's one of the people, I'm like, she's done nothing to deserve this. She's no. done nothing to deserve this. It, it, oh, man. Did you see one of her responses on Twitter? Uh, which one? She's got a bunch. She, she said, no, it was. She was responding to a fan. She said. So, they said something like she's like uglier or something like that. She and he said I guess. And then she said I can still pull more women than you or something like that. And I just. <laughs> and I was just like. And I. I think I put. I think I put a, a gif of of Norman Bates from Bates Motel. Yes, hello. I like to report a murder. <laughs> 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 Whenever Russell has a sick burn like that, I was I'm like, someone please call nine one one. All right, on to another <laughs> tag team championship that's on the line. Raw tag team championship, New Day defending against the Hurt Business. I think we've really, really been waiting for this one for a while. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Um, Mike is calling a new champion here. I think the Hurt Business is going to take it. Uh, Honestly. Tommy? I'm inclined to agree because I think the Hurt Business is finally being taken seriously. Surprise there. Uh, you know, and, and I think they, they should win some gold now. I mean, yeah, the, the U.S. title, of, you know, and everything is nice, but they're a whole group. They Bobby Lashley could be world champion. Bobby Lashley should be world champion. If anyone should have beat Drew McIntyre, it should have been Bobby Lashley, especially now. It wouldn't be the first time they've met. Uh-huh. Just admit it. You're gonna copy Impact. Just admit it, Vince. You're gonna copy Impact, and just do it. Um. Every time I feel like the Hurt Business is gonna make a leap and do something big, they just lose and fall right back down. 
it's it's not a uh, disruption, but it's 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 on that level, you know. <laughs> you you so, beat me by one second. Yeah, I'll so I'm going with New Day because it feels like whenever they're going to get some sort of like big push or some chance to run with something, W was like, nah, change my mind and just throw them back down. So I'm <laughs> sticking with New Day to retain. Vince, so Vince, Vince be like, nah, fam, nah. Yeah. Uh, SmackDown Women's Championship. Sasha Banks defending against Carmella, who you almost just don't recognize, <laughs> you know? So it, it's yeah. a very different look, you know? Uh, Mike is going Sasha. I'm going Sasha. I don't, I mean, as great as Carmella is debuting this new look, this new attitude, I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm sticking with Sasha right now. They're, they're going to build something up through WrestleMania. So I'm going with that. But, well, um, uh, I'm gonna go with Sasha too, only because it's like she's. I mean, like, I mean, they let her defend it once and didn't make her lose it immediately. So like, yeah. sky's the limit now. She, she could, she could do anything at this point. It's like, it's like, wow, like, it's, it's like when she defended the first time and didn't lose, I was like, what, what? She kept the belt up to the first defense. Is this, is this, what is this year? It's broken yeah. everything. So. And honestly, I think this match will probably end up in like a DQ or something, and it'll turn into like a notice qualification match somewhere down the line. So, probably Rumble. All right, on to the Universal Championship. This is the first of two TLC matches. Uh, Roman Reigns defending the title against Kevin Owens. Um, it's interesting if this is going to finish the show or going to be like semi main or somewhere in the middle. Because both of the TLC matches, one to the Universal title, one to the WWE Championship, have some high-profile things. So, um, anyway, uh, Roman defending against Kevin Owens. Mike is picking Roman to win. I'm picking Roman to win. I just I can't see him right now with this heel push that he's getting, uh, being uh, yeah. you know the getting a uh, what can I say? It's having the title being taken off of him, you know. Right. So. Okay. Um, um, well, yeah. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, it, which is funny because I'm because I'm loving I'm loving the the semi heel Owens that we're getting right now because the whole the whole when he beat up Jay and then moved the stuff off the announce table and sat down at the head of the table was kind of awesome. So. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, you're going with Roman here too. Yeah, I'm going with Roman. Mm -hmm. Um, WWE Championship match, also TLC, as I mentioned, Drew McIntyre defending against AJ Styles. Uh, Mike is picking Drew McIntyre to retain here. And, um, uh, I, uh, I'm wearing the t-shirt because I feel like something crazy is about to happen. <laughs> so, call me crazy, but I think AJ is going to pull the title away here and do so. I don't know why. I just feel like there's some I weird thing where they're going to. Hit the proverbial reset. Maybe McIntyre wins the Royal Rumble again and gets another shot or something like that. So I actually think AJ Styles is going to win on TLC and uh, just uh, uh, shock the world. Uh, you know? I don't know. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Drew as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Who did Mike pick for the last match for Roman? Oh, Roman Reigns. He picked Roman Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I just want, and then I, I'm sorry. I missed it. Anyway, but I, I, I hope it's Drew. I mean, you know what? Okay. I hope it's Drew, but I won't that if it's AJ because at least – it, he has to face AJ five times in a row, and for some for some random reason, he loses it this time. And then you know the, the, the whole thing with Orton was so weird. Anyway, uh, but, but Drew's reign was actually really decent. So if, if something like that happens, that'd be fine. But I hope and pray it's Drew still winning. But because I just like the tear he's on. But anyway, well you know we'll see. All right. Uh... That is TLC. That is what is scheduled right now. Obviously, there may be some more matches that appear on the card, depending on what happens on SmackDown this Friday. Um, which I think, yeah, they've already they've already started working the Thunderdome out of Tropicana in uh, St. Petersburg or Tampa Bay, Florida. Okay. So, um, uh, um, so, so uh, I forget who's the U.S. champion, but uh, when Andrade comes back, does he have to automatically feud with them and <laughs> challenge? I mean. It's the U.S. title, and he's like one of the few Hispanic guys that they're still pushing a lot. So I'm just oh. assuming when he comes back. I mean, Andrade versus Lashley would be pretty cool. That's. Uh, I mean, it would be. Yeah. I mean, I mean. So, is there any kind of like 
Hispanic or Mexican combination for Lashley because I have a feeling, you know, with, you know, Paul Cruz, he had Cruz, and you can easily, so Lashley, I mean, you know, I don't know if you can do that, but, you know, if he faces yeah. Andrade, he has to. <laughs> yes. It's, just, it's the rules. Yeah. Now, uh, before we go on with the show, I will just let everybody know, that, of course, that next week we're going to be talking and making our WrestleCast uh, year in awards, the first time we're doing it. I'll put the graphic up here. Uh, you know, we've been picking the normal things like male rest of the year, female rest of the year, tag team of the year, promotion of the year, match of the year, and pay-per-view or event of the year. But each of us is going to be on this show and have something fun to bring to the table. So, yeah. you know, um, and just uh, what kind of award we come up with and uh, who we would award it to, we'll find out. Uh, we'll find I, out as we get here. The funny part is I actually have a couple of awards in mind just in case someone picks mine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, and with that, we'll move into our one-minute warning segment. Uh, now, Mike is not here, but he sent me his. Oh, God. And I am going to have some fun reading this. He only gave me a little bit of notes, but I'm going to kind of spend the minute to expand on what, what, what this is about. So, I can't uh, wait. Yeah. We'll start the minute going right now. So... If you watched the GeekCast last night, we go live on Facebook every Monday night. We talked about a wide variety of topics. We were going on for about two and a half hours. <laughs> and at one point, we were talking about, of course, the whole Disney investor review, a lot of the reveals that they had. And I know Mike, he's a huge fan of the show Agents of Shield, Agents of Shield which was on Netflix. And he put it up in the chat, wondering uh, if they would bring that into the fold somehow. And we had Joe on, of course, and then Ryan from LBC Movie Talk was a guest, and they immediately just trashed that idea because they thought the show was crap. And Mike wanted me to just let these guys know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is underrated, and Joe from the Geek Cast and Ryan from LBC Movie Talk can suck it. And that's it. <laughs> What's funny is, I know he'd say that to their face. That's the that's the yeah. part. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so hilarious. So I, I was looking forward to seeing that and your move, guys. See if you guys watch this and respond to it as well. So, uh, Tommy, do you have anything you want to uh, uh, talk about in the one-minute warning this week? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, mine might go a bit over because okay. I, I got to start. I got to. I got to start with the uh, Tokyo sports news that came out uh, the other day. Actually, yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Well, whenever. Let me pull the timer up here. Uh. Okay, ready, yep. set, and go. Okay, for starters, Tokyo Sports announced their MVPs of 2020, and the winner of the MVP award for wrestlers was Tetsuya Naito of New Japan, of course. Um, but uh, Takahashi won the Fighting Spirit Award because he came back from his injury. And also, one of my favorites, Julia, because everyone loves, 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 loves Julia, won the Women's Award uh, in, in, for that side. Also, in Best of Super Juniors, Takahashi won it. The World Tag League Girls of Destiny won. And the Super J Cup, El Phantasmo defeated ACH in the finals. ACH also defeated Chris Bay in the semifinals. So, you know, you know, of course, they aired it before turning uh, uh, final resolution. But, you know, Chris Bay had a pretty stellar weekend as far as his wrestling record goes. Um, yeah. Also, uh, the, uh, you, uh, you should probably watch, I'm a, I'm a, uh, you guys probably watch the last day for the best Super Junior finals and the World Tag League because Sonata finally snapped. <laughs> and he assaulted Evil. He finally broke his calm demeanor and just went after Evil for everything. And I was, I was, I was hoping uh, Mike would be here, but Jeff Cobb's getting his never title shot at Wrestle Ooh, Kingdom. Ooh boy! It's Ooh, that, boy. It's that it, uh, they, they've confirmed it. It's night two, and yeah. kind of, and, and kind of in the same vein. Uh, this weekend was Mission Pro Wrestling, which, by the way, was a stellar weekend. The show was fantastic. Shouts out to yeah. Larosa Negro, which I'll be talking about on my channel pretty soon. Probably have that video up tomorrow. If I can help it, but I met friends of a guy named Blake Christian who's been in uh, uh, who's been in New Japan's uh, shows lately, and uh, he's 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 a pretty good guy, and they, they they vouch for him too. So you know, super proud, super cool to meet guys who are friends of his, and uh, uh, yeah, news out of Japan is pretty crazy. The fu the funniest thing about the MVP award was everyone was saying that Goshi Ozaki should have won the award over Naito, but like, everyone was kind of like, yeah, but well, we kind of get it, but. But props to Go Shiozaki because he's had one hell of a year too. It's like where Naito was doing everything he could as champion to keep New Japan afloat during all this. Shio Go Shiozaki has definitely been doing the same thing, especially when they had that hour-long match where for the first 30 minutes they circled each other. Yeah. 
which is still one of my favorite things I've ever heard done in a match, period. I don't care what anyone ever says about wrestling anymore. The fact that these two guys got their gear on, came out, and circled each other for 30 minutes and never did anything is just one of those things in wrestling that I love. Yeah, you don't do it all the time, but in the few moments you can get away with it, you run with that thing. <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I really didn't have a women warning today. Uh, I'll have uh, something I need to say, though, at the end after we talk about uh, the events uh, that are coming up this week. So let's kind of get into that real quick. Uh, Ring of Honor Final Battle uh, was already filmed, but it's going to be airing on pay-per-view this Friday, December 18th at 8 p.m. Central Time. Pre-show will start at 7 It'll be. It was filmed at the UMBC Event Center in Baltimore, Maryland. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're an Honor Club member with Ring of Honor, you can check out the website about the details. I think it's nine ninety nine a month. You can watch that for free, or watch it on Fight TV for just twenty dollars. Not bad. Uh, Actually, yeah, long yeah. Not yeah. yeah. So it'll be weird watching Ring of Honor without a crowd in attendance, but I think it's definitely yeah, a pretty good sure. card to watch. So give it a take. A, give it a look this Friday. It's also and weird then, that it's also weird for a whole year I haven't been to Ring of Honor show because they they stopped through here at least once a year now. Oh it's yeah, so crazy. Yes. <laughs> that kind of a year, right? Yeah. Uh, WWE TLC is Sunday, December twentieth at six p.m. Central Time. Pre shows at five o'clock from Tropicana Field in Saint Petersburg, Florida, and it will be on WWE Network. So, uh, our Twitter account, of course, at CCG underscore Westcast, and subscribe here to the Countdown City Geeks YouTube channel. Next week we are going to recap. ROH Final Battle and WWE TLC and be talking our WrestleCast Awards for 2020. Um, but unfortunately, I have just received some disturbing news literally as we were recording this. Um, I got a message from Tez's mom. And it, today, uh, WrestleCaster, our good friend, who was going to be on next week to do our awards, Tez has passed away. Um, I don't know all the details of this. Um, she's going to give me a call tomorrow. We're recording this on Tuesday. I literally just found out. So if you're wondering why midway through the show, all of a sudden I got a little flustered. That's why. <laughs> um, I, uh, God, I, I can't put into words right now. This sucks. This really sucks. Uh, I feel I, my thoughts are with men, his fiance. Yeah. With his mom, his sister, who I who had worked with on uh, building some stuff in Photoshop for her de debut, um, I'll have more thoughts about this next week. Uh, this twenty twenty really sucks, and uh, Tez, I love you. I'm, I'm gonna miss you so much. Um, this is real life, and this sucks really bad. So, uh, we'll uh, we'll talk more about it next week. Um, but Tez, uh, we love you. We'll miss you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, enjoy the rest of this weekend. Uh, I think, regardless, Tess would want us to keep going on and keep talking yeah. wrestling. That, that was, he loved it. He loved it, among, yeah. among other things. So, uh, Tommy, thank you for joining me this week. Uh, feel free to do your sign off now. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, Thanks, guys. Yes. And I'm JC, and as always, still some baby faces. Remember, pro wrestling is real, people yeah. are fake. I miss your test. Oh, my God. Jesus.